In this lesson, we will focus on solving quadratic inequalities using a number line. We will express our solutions using number line notation, inequality notation, and interval notation. The first step in solving a quadratic inequality is to change the inequality to an equation. Then, find the solutions to the quadratic equation. Let's use the factoring method. To factorize, we need to find two numbers that multiply to give negative 28, and at the same time, add up to 3. These numbers are negative 4 and 7, right? So, when we factor this quadratic equation, it becomes x minus 4 times x plus 7, which equals 0. Then, set each factor equal to 0 and solve for x. Solving the first equation, we get x equals 4. Solving the second equation, we get x equals negative 7. Next, draw a number line and plot the solutions to the quadratic equation. On the left end, we have negative infinity. On the right end, we have positive infinity. Notice that our number line is divided into three intervals, less than negative 7, between negative 7 and 4, and greater than 4. Now, choose one test point from each of these intervals. For the first interval, we can use negative 8. For the second interval, let's use 0. For the third interval, we can use 5. Then, substitute these test points into the quadratic expression to determine whether it is positive or negative in each interval. Instead of using the original expression, we can use its factored form as it is easier to evaluate. For the first interval, substituting negative 8, negative 8 minus 4 results in a negative number, and negative 8 plus 7 also results in a negative number. The product of two negative numbers is positive. Therefore, the quadratic expression is positive in the first interval. For the second interval, substituting 0, 0 minus 4 gives us a negative number, but 0 plus 7 gives us a positive number. The product of a negative and a positive number is negative. Therefore, the quadratic expression is negative in the second interval. For the third interval, substituting 5, 5 minus 4 results in a positive number and 5 plus 7 also results in a positive number. The product of two positive numbers is positive. Therefore, the quadratic expression is positive in the third interval. The next step is to identify the intervals where the inequality holds true. Remember, when we say an expression is greater than 0, we mean it is positive. Less than 0 means it is negative. Greater than or equal to 0 means it is either positive or 0. Less than or equal to zero means it is either negative or zero. In our case, the inequality is less than or equal to zero. So, we need to identify intervals where the quadratic expression is either negative or zero. It is negative when x is between negative seven and four, and it is zero when x equals negative seven and four. Therefore, the inequality holds true for any value of x between and including negative seven and four. To represent this solution on a number line, mark closed circles at negative 7 and 4. In number line notation, we use a closed circle to show that the endpoint of the inequality is included in the solution. Then, shade the line between these circles, indicating that any value of x within this range is a solution. In interval notation, the solution is represented as the interval negative 7 to 4, including both negative 7 and 4. In interval notation, brackets indicate that the endpoint of the interval is included in the solution. We have represented the solution using number line notation, inequality notation, and interval notation. What happens if we change the inequality sign? Let's find out. The first one is what we have just solved when the inequality is less than or equal to zero. Since the quadratic expression is the same for all cases, the solution to the corresponding quadratic equation is also the same. The sign of the expression is also the same. The second inequality is greater than zero. So, we need to identify intervals where the quadratic expression is positive only. It is positive when x is less than negative seven or greater than four. Therefore, the inequality holds true for any value of x less than negative seven or greater than four, but not including negative seven and four. Negative seven and four are not included in the solution because the inequality is greater than zero only. To represent this on a number line, 
mark open circles at negative 7 and 4, and shade the line to the left of negative 7 and to the right of 4. In number line notation, we use an open circle to show that the endpoint of the inequality is not included in the solution. In interval notation, the solution is represented as negative infinity to negative 7, union 4 to positive infinity, excluding both negative 7 and 4. In interval notation, we use parentheses to indicate that the endpoint of the inequality is not included in the solution. We also use parentheses for negative and positive infinity, as they are not a specific point on the number line. Now please pause the video and give it a try when the inequality is less than 0 and greater than or equal to 0. When the inequality is less than 0, you need to identify intervals where the quadratic expression is negative only. It is negative when x is between negative 7 and 4. Therefore, the inequality holds true for any value of x between negative 7 and 4, but not including negative 7 and 4, as the inequality is less than 0 only. To represent this solution on a number line, mark open circles at negative 7 and 4, and shade the line between these circles. When the inequality is greater than or equal to zero, you need to identify intervals where the quadratic expression is either positive or zero. It is positive when x is less than negative seven or greater than four, and it is zero when x equals negative seven and four. Therefore, the inequality holds true for any value of x, less than or equal to negative seven or greater than or equal to four. I would like you to note two important things. First, when the inequality is either less than or greater than, the solutions to the quadratic equation are not included in the quadratic inequality solution. However, when the inequality is either less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, the solutions to the quadratic equation are included in the quadratic inequality solution. Keep this in mind. Second, in general, when the quadratic equation has two real solutions, as in this example, the solution to the quadratic inequality can only be either the middle interval or the union of the outer intervals. It cannot be the union of the middle and the outer intervals. It also cannot be all real numbers or no solution. However, if the quadratic equation has only one real solution, the solution to the quadratic inequality can also be all real numbers, one solution, or there may be no solution at all. Let's see that with our second example. First, Change the quadratic inequality to an equation. Then, find the solution to the quadratic equation. Let's use the factoring method for this one too. Since the leading coefficient is different from 1, we will use the AC method. Find two numbers that multiply to give the product of 4 and 9, which is 36, and at the same time, add up to negative 12. Negative 6 times negative 6 gives us 36. When we add them, we get negative 12, right? Now split the middle term using these two numbers. If we add these terms back together, we get the original negative 12x, so we are not changing the value of the equation. The other terms in the equation stay the same. Then, factor by grouping. Group the first two terms together and the last two terms together, then factor out the greatest common factor from each group. From the first group, factor out 2x, leaving us with 2x minus 3. From the second group, Factor out negative 3, also leaving us with 2x minus 3. Then, factor out the common factor for both groups, which is 2x minus 3. The remaining factor is also 2x minus 3. Notice that both factors are the same, so this quadratic expression is a perfect square trinomial, and we will have only one real solution. Now, set 2x minus 3 equal to 0 and solve for x. If we add 3 to both sides of the equation, we get 2x equals 3, right? Now, if we divide both sides by 2, we get x equals 3 halves. By the way, if you want to revise solving quadratic equations using factoring, completing the square and quadratic formula, please check out the links in the description. Next, draw a number line and plot 3 halves. Notice that our number line is divided into two intervals, less than 3 halves, and greater than 3 halves. Now, choose one test point from each of these intervals. For the first interval, we can use 0. For the second interval, let's use 2. Then, substitute these test points into the quadratic expression. Use the factored form, as it is easier to evaluate. For the first interval, 
substituting 0, we get negative 3 squared, which results in a positive number. Therefore, the quadratic expression is positive in the first interval. For the second interval, substituting 2, we get 1 squared, which also results in a positive number. Therefore, the quadratic expression is positive in the second interval. The next step is to identify the intervals where the inequality holds true. Since the inequality is greater than 0, we need to identify intervals where the quadratic expression is positive only. It is positive when x is less than or greater than 3 halves. Therefore, the inequality holds true for any value of x less than 3 halves or greater than 3 halves, but not including 3 halves. To represent this solution on a number line, mark an open circle at 3 halves and shade the line to the left and right of 3 halves. In interval notation, the solution is represented as negative infinity to 3 halves, union 3 halves to positive infinity, excluding 3 halves. If we change the inequality sign, we will get solutions like all real numbers, one solution or no solution. Let's see that. The first one is what we have just solved. The second inequality is greater than or equal to zero. So, identify intervals where the quadratic expression is either positive or zero. It is positive when x is less than 3 halves or greater than 3 halves, and it is zero when x equals 3 halves, right? Therefore, the inequality holds true for all values of x. The solution is all real numbers. In interval notation, this is represented as negative infinity to positive infinity. The third inequality is less than or equal to zero. There is no interval where the quadratic expression is negative. However, it is zero when x equals 3 halves. Therefore, the solution is x equals 3 halves. This inequality has only one solution. The last inequality is less than zero. There is no interval where the quadratic expression is negative only. Therefore, no values of x make the inequality true. No solution to this inequality. So, in general, when the quadratic equation has only one real solution, the solution to the quadratic inequality can only be one of the following, the union of the two intervals, all real numbers, the solution of the quadratic equation, or no solution at all. However, if the quadratic equation has no real solution, the solution to the quadratic inequality can only be either all real numbers or no solution at all. This is important, so please stay with me. We are almost done. In the previous examples, the quadratic inequalities were given in standard form. However, in this case, the inequality is not in standard form. So, our first step here is to rewrite this quadratic inequality in standard form. To do this, subtract 11 from both sides of the equation. Then, change the inequality to an equation and find the solutions to the quadratic equation. In previous examples, we used the factoring method as it was easier to factor. However, in this example, finding two numbers that multiply to give the product of negative 1 and negative 11 and add up to 5 is challenging. So, it's difficult to factor, right? In such cases, we can use the quadratic formula. To do that first, identify the values of the coefficients. a is negative 1, b is 5, and c is negative 11. Next, write down the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Then, substitute the values of the coefficients into the formula. Now simplify this. Inside the square root, 5 squared is 25. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 11 is 44. In the denominator, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. 25 minus 44 is negative 19. Notice that the discriminant, which is the number inside the square root, is negative. This means the quadratic equation has no real solution. Next, draw a number line. Because there is no real solution, we have just one interval from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, choose one test point. You can pick any real number, but let's use zero, as it is easier to evaluate. Then, substitute this test point into the quadratic expression, rewritten in standard form. Zero minus 11 results in a negative number. Therefore, 
the quadratic expression is negative for the entire interval. The inequality asks for the values of x that make the quadratic expression less than zero. Since the quadratic expression is negative for the entire interval, the inequality holds true for all values of x. Therefore, the solution is all real numbers. Let's see what happens if we change the inequality sign. The first one is what we have just solved. The second inequality is greater than or equal to zero. There is no interval where the quadratic expression is either positive or zero. Therefore, no values of x make the inequality true. No solution to this inequality. The third inequality is less than or equal to zero. The quadratic expression is negative for the entire interval. Therefore, the solution is all real numbers. The last inequality is greater than zero. There is no interval where the quadratic expression is positive. Therefore, no solution to this inequality. So, in general, when the quadratic equation has no real solution, the solution to the quadratic inequality is either all real numbers or no solution at all. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing.